So, I'm Adam Spires. I'm a senior software engineer at SUSE, working on SUSE OpenStack Cloud. And I'll let my colleague introduce himself. Yeah. Hi. So, maybe some of you have expected uh, Mark Hodora to be on stage today, but unfortunately, he couldn't join the um, OpenStack Summit, so I will replace him. My name is Boris Mack. I'm, like Mark, part of the Cloud Infrastructure Engineering and Architecture team within SAP. <coughs> So today we will talk about um, the customer vendor relationship between SUSE and SAP and how we successfully established a DevOps model in, in this relationship. Yeah, and uh, so this is a, a quick agenda of what we're going to talk about, just a setting the scene um, regarding the open stack strategies of the two companies. Uh, then we'll look at what a typical vendor customer relationship looks like and how that caused um, some issues for us and how we felt that we needed to go beyond that and develop a new model. Um, so then we'll go into how, how we developed that new solution and what the benefits that we've got out of that so far uh, are. And uh, we'll talk also a bit about what we're planning for the future and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, um, yeah, let's talk about OpenStack at SAP as well as on the SUSE side. So I will um, start <coughs> with a summary why we choose um, OpenStack at SAP as our platform. As you can see on the diagram, the SAP IoT platform is running on the so-called SAP Cloud Platform. On the other hand, the SAP Cloud Platform is using Cloud Foundry as its platform as a service um, layer. Also, SAP wanted to be vendor neutral and avoid any vendor lock-in. So these two um, points, the Cloud Foundry platform as well as the vendor neutral, to be vendor neutral, um, led us to the decision that OpenStack would be the right infrastructure layer um, as the fundament of, of the whole stack. And a quick few words about the product that I work on, which is SUSE OpenStack Cloud, and that is uh, one of the products, the, one of the cloud products that SAP has selected to build as the uh, infrastructure as a service platform, and they build everything else on top of. So it's an enterprise distribution of OpenStack. Uh, it's fully uh, free open source software, and uh, in addition to packaging, um, an enterprise polished version of OpenStack, it includes some additional deployment and management capabilities. <clears throat> so let's talk about mid, uh, uh, let's talk a bit more about the uh, customer and um, vendor relationship, low, um, how it was applied. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and how it was applied, but uh, is, uh, was applied between SAP and, and SUSE. So as you can see in the diagram, um, we have an internal customer within SAP, which is consuming the infrastructure as a service um, platform. So this customer or stakeholder is talking to the SAP infrastructure dev team for its um, requirements. The dev team <coughs> is trying to yeah, set up these requirements and establish them in, in the production environment. And so we have a connection between the dev team and um, the ops team within uh, SAP. The ops team, of course, is responsible of running the whole stack and um, operating it. In case of any problems and failures, the operations teams can contact the, the vendor, in this case SUSE, L1, L2 support um, layers. So if the SUSE L1, L2 support is not able to fix the problem, they need to do some internal escalation to the SUSE cloud engineering. And finally, if it is not a problem within the SUSE cloud product, but but uh, maybe a problem on the SUSE Enterprise Linux um, operating system. The SUSE cloud engineering team needs another escalation to the SUSE less um, engineering team. <coughs> but that's how it should be in an ideal world. Let's come to a more real world example because we have not only um, the stakeholder talking to, to the dev and ops team, we have also the platform operations. And as you can see, the communication gets much more difficult because the, the platform operations is also talking to the dev team, it's talking to the ops team. In case of some problems and errors, the SAP dev team 
is not talking to the ops team and the ops team to the to the vendor, but um, the dev team will directly uh, speak to the vendor to speed up communication, to simplify communication, and it's hard to get um, the big picture and um, get an idea of who is working on on, on what topic. But um, do you think that that's already the, <coughs> the the full picture? Of course not, because um, we have also management involved. So in case of a real escalation, management always want to be involved um, <coughs> in the in the communication uh, in the communication flows. So this means, of course, some extra communication. On the one <coughs> one hand, this can um, can hinder because um, it's, it's communication flows on tops, and as you can see, it's really uh, confusing um, communication flows now. Of the other side, and on the, of, of, on the other hand, this is sometimes required to get the right um, priority um, of the uh, of the error or of the um, resources um, on the vendor side. So <coughs> maybe. You remember this picture we had before, and you are wondering why the beautiful simplicity of this support diagram feels familiar to, to you. So let, let me remind you where you may have seen this before. Okay, <laughs> just joking. Let's see, if you haven't seen it before, it's the uh, OpenStack architecture diagram, which is one of the, it's, what, it's the, the image that is like, it has to go on every OpenStack presentation everywhere as, <laughs> like, as a rule. Um, and it's, yeah, beautifully simple. Okay, um, but what are the issues with the standard support, even if everything is working um, like expected? Yeah, so uh, the first issue, uh, as we've seen, like the information can take multiple hops to get from the, the source to where it needs to go if somebody needs to find out some information. So you get this inherent latency in the system um, of communication. And uh, similarly, that makes it really hard for people to get visibility into what's really going on if they have to ask somebody who needs to ask somebody else who needs to ask somebody else and so on. So the, the, uh, the, 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 all the different communication channels and the, the hops between them really contribute to this lack of visibility. And um, similarly, this uh, has an impact on the ability to respond quickly when things happen. Um, because it can take uh, time for the, uh, some critical message to get to the right person in the, in the right team. And uh, so that, that's a, a kind of short-term um, issue in, in terms of agility, but there's also the long-term issue as well of um, if the, the customer wants to uh, feedback to the, the vendor and kind of uh, give real world expertise and guidance around the direction the product should go, um, then that the efficiency of communication is, is important on the long term as well. <clears throat> yeah. So let's have some real world example, or should I better say it's a catastrophe. So it was on a beautiful Saturday morning. <laughs> we had a well prepared maintenance window. Everybody <clears throat> was feeling like, you know, Let's get starting early, finish early, have a nice weekend, enjoy the weekend. But, <laughs> of course, we, during the maintenance, we run into some massive network problems. So the VMs stopped to communicating to each other, and we had no clue why this happened. Yeah, because we just wanted to apply some Ohm stack patches, which doesn't relate to any networking feature. <coughs> At the end, we, uh, we were able to solve the problem, but uh, for this we need to start, uh, restart um, all Nova services and OBS services on all of our hypervisors. So, uh, yeah, I will continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so let's get more to the details of this outage. Yeah, as I already mentioned, it was Saturday morning. We were well prepared for the maintenance. Everybody felt comfortable because we had also SUSE on, on hand, so Adam was connected to this um, maintenance bridge, and we were like, yep, everything will went well. <coughs> However, 
um, Adam has had no console access to the environment, but there was a screen sharing session available. So we started applying our packages and updates, we run the configuration management, everything was fine. And then suddenly the VM started <coughs> and uh, lose their connectivity. As I mentioned before, we had no clue why this happened because we didn't touch anything on the network layer and just applied some OpenStack patches. So what to do now? Of course, we had to troubleshoot the problem. We had to extend the maintenance window. So luckily, several hours later, we were able um, to stabilize the, the cloud again and everything was running smooth again. But due to the limited visibility, what operations did to fix the problem, and, and nobody really could, could answer why this happened and we, had, we didn't have any root cause. And of course, as you can imagine, we had to extend it, the maintenance windows for hours. Our customer was really happy about that situation. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was one of the lucky people um, involved in the, the whole saga uh, from beginning to end. So um, like Boris said, I was in the maintenance window. Um, and then on Monday morning, the, the root cause analysis um, started in earnest uh, on top of what we'd already uh, gathered on Saturday. So we, we started collecting debug, and this was really quite a laborious task because there were huge numbers of log files. Um, and we needed to get them over to the SUSE side so that we could analyze them in depth and run some of our uh, analysis tools on them. And uh, at first, we weren't sure exactly which logs we needed. Um, so we collected a bunch. We did some initial initial analysis. It was clear that it was the problem was related to Open vSwitch in some way, um, and we we had a sort of initial uh, conclusion that we shared with SAP uh, a couple of days later. And we kept analysing. Um, we were still trying to get to the bottom of things. Had an internal call. Did more analysis. Uh, eventually, we got to, by day 12, a place where we thought, okay, we've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on. It's not like a smoking gun that we're 100% co confident, but it does look like we found what seems to be very likely the culprit. Um, but of course, we were not satisfied with that, so we kept digging, and eventually, uh, when we'd uh, brought in all the possible experts and spent as much time on it as we could, we, we finally came up with something with we, we were happy, okay, we really understand what's going on now. Um, so it was, it was quite a long period. And the, uh, in case you're curious, you know, what, briefly, what was the, the cause of all this? Um, so a while before, someone in the SAP dev team had um, needed, for very valid reasons, to test a new feature. They didn't want to test it in production, just in a, you know, other environments. Um, and this new feature relied on Neutron's L2 population feature, which you, you don't need to know what that is. If you, it's, it's not really important for the purposes of this, but it's, a, it's an option in Neutron that you can en enable or disable. Um, and the code change to enable it accidentally got into the PTF package that we built for production, which included a bunch of other fixes that SAP needed for their production cloud. So it got accidentally enabled um, on some of the nodes that we updated during the maintenance window, but not all of them. And this was a, a big, uh, really the source of the problem. Um, so w why did it take us so long to figure it out? Well, firstly, Neutron L2, especially with Open vSwitch, is just a really complicated beast, and there's, there's no way around that. Um, there's, you know, hundreds, thousands of log messages that you really have to be an expert to understand. Um, and the, the fact that we had accidentally enabled this feature on some of the nodes but not others meant that we were effectively using an invalid config and there was no validation in OpenStack to, to catch that invalid config. Um, and it was probably some uh, situation that maybe, you know, no one else in the OpenStack community had made that same mistake before. So the resulting behavior was not only undefined but undocumented and you couldn't Google for it um, or really figure out, you know, recognize it as, as, as coming from this, this cause. Um, the other um, mistake that with hindsight from, I guess, the SUSE side we, we made 
uh, was to not involve SAP enough in the, uh, in the ongoing investigations um, because they did have you know, some great knowledge about exactly what happened during the maintenance window that could have potentially led to us figuring things out a bit quicker. Um, but that, it wasn't the, the, the main cause of the, uh, the difficulty. And of course, we, we, the, while this was all going on, we all had other responsibilities that were competing for our time with what was going on. So we learned that the organizational structure was not set up for um, succeeding in, in the way we want to. Um, the communication while this was going on was all over the place, like the diagram you saw earlier. Um, we did waste time collecting logs because we collected some um, early on and then realized that we didn't have the right logs and then we collected those and then we realized that they were still not the right ones because the logs that we actually needed were, had been rotated because they were from an earlier time period so we had to collect again and so on. And th this is clearly not the, the most efficient way of debugging. So remote access helps a lot with that um, because you can just get the logs that you need uh, straight away. And uh, similarly, if you have remote access, especially in a joint vendor customer situation, then you can um, do screen sharing uh, type tools uh, through the same terminal session using like screen or tmux or something like that. And uh, we also learned that the, the process that we had for building these custom packages um, for customers who need fixes earlier than they normally get released through our, our maintenance update process um, was not rigorous enough that um, you know, they're, they're manually built and it's hard to keep track of, of all the fixes that you're building into that PTF. And um, we didn't have um, in, uh, rigorous enough testing around those particular packages, even though the rest of the product and all our um, officially released maintenance updates do get very rigorous testing. This was a bit of an Achilles heel. And finally, of course, OpenStack is just a complex thing, as we all know. So uh, there's not much we can do about that in the, in the short term, at least. <coughs> yeah. So like Adam mentioned, we had a lot of lessons learned, but what to do now? And we decided to have a two-day joint meeting together with SAP and SUSE uh, folks to <coughs> see how we can, can improve the process and, and the situation here. So and, yeah, what was the outcome of this? Of course, it's a new DevOps model approach <laughs> together with SUSE. <clears throat> so we apply this new DevOps model, and um, yeah, as you can see, it looks um, quite different to the to, to the drawing we had before. So we really try to avoid all these um, cross communication flows um, we had before. So um, as you can see, we have two main tracks. One uh, is still for for development, the other, the other one for operations, but we have now in the middle um, this DevOps approach. So let's begin from the top. Um, we still have the stakeholder and the platform operation guys, <coughs> but they are now on, this, on the same level and they need to sync each other if they have new requirements. Second, we installed a new um, team, which is called, in our case, the infrastructure architecture team. Um, as a new layer um, uh, between the stakeholder and, and, and dev. So the architecture team will um, validate the requirements and if they are not valid, give it back to the stakeholder. They will finalize and prioritize um, also the requirements um, coming from the customer. So the architecture team will hand over this, <coughs> these tasks um, to the dev team. And um, as you can see, the dev team has now direct access to some of the SUSE cloud engineering re resources. So they can even work together and on some of the topics, yeah, if you have um, bigger topics, where, where we are both involved. So and for this uh, dedicated SUSE team, it is uh, much more easy to involve the right resources um, within SUSE if, if there are other resources from the vendor um, are required. <clears throat> Rolling out new features, this will happen um, in, in this DevOps part, so not development is, is rolling out new features and op, uh, or handing over to operation. It's working again. 
features. Um, so it's, it's a joint approach, approach here with Dev and Ops people. And even if it is um, bigger rollouts of, of, um, uh, yeah, of some uh, um, features which, which are um, not, that, not, that, not that easy um, to roll out, the DevOps team can, can easily involve um, the SUSE team uh, for, for this um, rollout <coughs> in the production environment. And so also um, we have closed um, with this approach the, the gap between the dev and the operation team. So if the operation team has some problem during the running the production and, and the daily work, they can e easily um, connect to the development colleagues um, for further help. Yeah, on the right track, we have still this, um, the, the, the daily operations flow where the platform operations, if they see some incidents or have some incidents, they can still uh, open a ticket on, with the operations guys and the operations guys will, will, run, um, uh, yeah, will run the production and operate the production environment. Okay, and on the uh, development side, uh, like on the technical side, we decided on a new approach that was to do a f effectively a friendly fork of SUSE OpenStack Cloud uh, that was specific for SAP that had the uh, short-term fixes and enhancements that SAP needed um, urgently so we could deliver them uh, to SAP normally, uh, faster than we normally deliver through our standard update process. Um, but we didn't want to maintain a, a long-term, continually diverging fork, so we agreed that everything should be uh, fed back into the, the mainline product, and of course that, that allows our engineering to scale in the normal way rather than having yet another um, product effectively to, to test and, and maintain um, and a, a whole extra code base. And uh, we use agile practices within SUSE as standard, so we wanted to keep that going in this context. Um, so that means things like daily stand-ups, obviously testing and CI in general, and a shared um, sort of product backlog for this, um, this new you know, product in the sense that it's a, a new code base stream delivered to um, a single customer effectively. So the way that we uh, decided to host that was a new GitHub organization with shared access from, from both sides that has forks of the product repositories that, um, that we expect to deviate from, from our standard product. Um, and each repository has an issue tracker in it, which is, of course, shared to both sides. And uh, we also use this GitHub project feature where it supports a, a single Kanban board type of view um, of all of the issues from all of these um, repositories in a, in a single view. And we developed um, a branching and tagging strategy for the Git repositories, um, which is that, oh, that's not rendering properly. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's a shame. If you, if you've, uh, at the end, we have, um, uh, again, the URL for the slides. So if you, if you follow that and you view the slides on your own um, laptop, hopefully you will get the proper view for this. I don't know what, where, why it's not displaying, but there's a, a, a Git branching um, diagram that accompanies the, the comments. But effectively, we have a, a mainline uh, stream that we already have for SUSE OpenStack Cloud, and then we branch off that um, for each cloud, each cloud that SAP is deploying, whether that's production or test. And um, so each branch effectively for, uh, represents the queue of changes that we want to deliver to that cloud. And then we uh, tag, uh, every time we deploy to that cloud, we, we make a tag on that branch so that we can go back later and, and see exactly which code has, has gone into that cloud. Um, so it's typically one tag per maintenance window um, but it could be multiple if, if we forget something in, at the beginning of the maintenance window and then make a correction later on. Um, and we merge the changes back into the, into the product, um, like I said before. Uh, so we get from this improved communication because we're using GitHub 
um, as the focal point for all the communication. Previously, we were tracking internally in SUSE. We have a, a Bugzilla instance that we were tracking um, the, the technical side of these issues. Um, but it had limited visibility to SAP. Basically, by default, bugs are private. And we wanted to share them with SAP for visibility on their side. So we had to CC all um, SAP onto all those bugs. Um, so they have access to the historical information, but it's, um, it's you know, for, for stuff going forward, we're using GitHub. We have a shared Slack channel that we're on, you know, all the time throughout the day, so we can quickly message anyone in either company. And we have the daily stand-ups, um, like I mentioned before. <coughs> yes, and so all, as Adam already mentioned, so the, it was really key to enable remote access um, for the vendor. And um, yeah, so we, we we gave SUSE the remote access to the uh, to our development as well as to the production system. <coughs> of course, we needed to take care about the right access level for the SUSE engineers, so they should only have uh, read access to the to some resources and not full access. But this improved um, working together a lot, as the SUSE engineers can now examine um, directly the, the production cloud and also. We don't waste um, any longer time in collecting logs, or let's say the right logs, um, anymore. There's now um, also more in-depth examination um, possible for the engineers. And finally, yeah, Adam already mentioned we could work together more efficiently because um, we could use uh, tools together like screen sharing um, or like um, sharing the console on a, on, a, on a screen session. Yep. Uh, that, from my personal perspective, that, that was a huge boost in uh, making, <coughs> making my life easier, helping out SAP, uh, having direct access. So on the CI front, um, we decided we wanted uh, essentially to make sure we could uh, make code changes faster, get them deployed to the SAP clouds quicker, but without increasing any risk. Um, so we wanted to obviously test everything before we deployed it, um, but just not test it as a fresh deployment, but, but test it as an upgrade path from a cloud um, like SAP already has deployed. So we're really focusing on what is the impact of, of upgrading, make, rolling this change into an existing cloud that's at, at, at a, uh, a certain state already. So the way we did that, um, we, we could reuse a lot of the existing internal CI that we have at SUSE for, for our product. Um, we have a bunch of build and test tools and methodology. Um, and fortunately, a, a lot of um, SAP's existing infrastructure was very accommodating for that. There's a lot of commonality between the two environments. Uh, of course, we wanted to focus on SAP's hardware and, and software stack and their particular open stack configuration. Um, SUSE OpenStack Cloud is a very uh, flexible product in terms of how you deploy your OpenStack Cloud, but SAP have decided to go in a you know, particular route and a particular set of configurations, so obviously that's the one that this CI um, needs, needs to focus on. Uh, so we have uh, daily uh, builds of various forms, and then we also have gating for pull requests, uh, so every time a request is submitted, the CI runs on it, and we can see how it performs. So the components we use for that, obviously GitHub, again. Uh, at SUSE, we have this thing called the Open Build Service, which is a, a free open source project that anyone can use to build um, packages um, for multiple distributions, actually, not just for SUSE distributions. Um, there's uh, many different distributions supported by it. It's a great place to host your package building. Um, processes, and it's certainly the, the core, one of the core components um, that we use at SUSE to build SUSE OpenStack Cloud, and um, it was the, the ideal um, component to, to use in this environment as well for building uh, custom SAP packages for testing in the CI. And the whole thing was orchestrated using Jenkins, which is, I'm sure you're all familiar with. So uh, how, how have we done? Now, it's, it's important to point out this is still a relatively early uh, um, approach to, or relatively young approach to um, this 
change in, in organizational and collaboration model. Um, so it was only around February time frame that we started. So um, it will be interesting to see how it develops over the next 6, 12 months and, and beyond. Um, but we've had some positive results already. Um, and so a couple of examples. Um, there was another uh, a recent outage um, where some packet loss was reported on network nodes in, in the morning, one morning. And um, obviously, we're, we're, SUSE got visibility of that very quickly because now we have the Slack channel. So SAP people can just message SUSE people straight away. Um, so obviously, you know, we took this very seriously, um, immediately reacted. Um, and then a short while later, we also discussed it in our daily stand-up. And as luck would hap happen, we had um, a, a guy on the, on the stand-up who, before the organizational changes, um, he would not have had any direct involvement with SAP. He was a kind of specialist automation engineer. Um, but due to these organizational changes, he attends the stand-ups. And uh, he heard the description of the problem from SAP and immediately recognized the the issue is something that he's been looking at for the last um, six months. It's an ongoing open vSwitch issue. And he knew a workaround for it straight away. So, so we went from uh, pretty much a critical situation that we were all very worried about to suddenly feeling, um, maybe I shouldn't say relaxed, but certainly a lot more comfortable with because we already um, had a good understanding of the, of the issue and how to mitigate it. Um, the second example was we had um, on a Tuesday evening uh, an ex unexpected restart of the message queue. And um, when we started to look at this in earnest, um, the uh, four, four engineers, including myself uh, from my team, were all able to directly access the production cloud that was being affected. And when we, we took a closer look and we produced some statistics from the metrics that get gathered, and you probably can't see any of that at all, um, but uh, I, I don't know, there's one, there's one square graph in particular, which is in the first column, and it's the, uh, well, it's the one in the middle, basically. Um, I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a very sharp increase in, in, in a red line, which represents the load average of that particular node. Each of these uh, five nodes is a, is a control node, and we, we saw that the load average on one was just going up sky high to about 140, 150, um, at which point the, the node just completely fell over. And that was obviously a very bad thing to happen, and so we looked more closely at the statistics, and we found uh, another spike, um, which again is in the first column, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it is the... Um, fourth from bottom, and it's a spike in UDP v6 traffic. Um, and as soon as we saw that, then we um, light bulbs started going off in people's heads, and we effectively uh, realized it's correlated to NFS uh, activity, and there was an issue with one of the NFS servers, um, which explained that. And what we were pleased with in, in that incident is that we were able to, with, with this kind of combined firepower of four engineers all logged on at the same time. We very quickly honed in on the right thing um, in, a, in a speed that we have maybe not managed to, to do previously. So that was definitely a nice benefit. Um, other than outages, um, th there are some other benefits. So working, I've, I've been working on um, a new feature recently, for example, around API rate limiting. And uh, it was really helpful for me during the, my kind of research phase of trying to figure out what's the best approach to this. It was really helpful to, as I was looking at different technologies available and different configuration options, um, to be able to message my SAP colleagues who are the stakeholders for this feature and say, hey, you know, do you need this particular approach or do you need this one? Um, and to have that kind of agile approach to the, the design rather than having SAP you know, write up some lengthy um, specification of the feature that they need and in advance and then pass that over to SUSE and then analyze that. And it, w it just felt like a much more efficient way of, of collaborating. Um, similarly, with um, short-term support requests, which um, traditionally go through this, this system, um, which I, as an engineer, don't have direct access to, and for long-term um, support requests for new features. Um, again, we have a, 
a system that is, is a kind of more heavyweight process. Um, so yeah, it just all felt more efficient so far. Yeah. Just a short outlook, what we are working in, in the future on together with SUSE and SAP. So, um, so we want, uh, oh sorry, this was the part still. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, well so yeah, I mentioned that I was working on the, uh, the rate limiting um, and so the, the reason for that is that the, um, uh, the, the customers of SAP um, are tending to use the OpenStack APIs um, from a cloud consumer perspective very heavily. So we obviously need to, um, to mitigate against the uh, p potential for uh, one customer uh, having uh, an unwanted impact through ov overloading certain API services. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also working on other things like um, uh, improving Neutron L3HA and, um, and other bottlenecks in the control plane. Um, okay. And it's, it's handy to be, again, to be able to discuss those directly with the stakeholders on a, a daily basis. So now what's planned for the future? Um, of course, we want to improve the monitoring. At the moment, we plan to have an, an ELK stack available in, within the SUSE um, product, so we can really, as a customer, now influence the, the SUSE guys um, to point them in the direction we want to see the product. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we will work together on a centralized management because we have the idea to, to deploy more uh, OpenStack clouds um, in, in multiple DCs with multiple availability zones and multiple um, in a multi-region <coughs> um, deployment. So, yeah, really for our operations and um, to have the visibility in, in one point over all our cloud installations, we want to have decentralized management. And um, finally, of course, we, we, we want to improve um, the operability of the cloud um, overall. So uh, this, to wrap it up, the um, traditional approach to uh, vendors and customers working together, um, of course it works in, in many situations, but it, it's not the only way to do things. And um, it, it sometimes can be a healthy thing to, to try uh, considering other approaches. Um, and the, the obvious sort of rebuttal to this approach is like, well, that's great, but you know, it's, it's expensive for uh, you know, SUSE to dedicate engineers to uh, a customer. It's expensive for the SAP to, you know, dedicate teams and ha have, have this sort of, it, like it does take extra effort. Um, and, th and that is true, but it's not an all or nothing thing. You can, you know, still some of the, some of the approaches we've taken, I think, apply in any situation, um, no matter how, how big or small the, the relationship. Um, for example, you can, um, you know, as, as we're all working in, in open source um, and OpenStack believes in the four opens uh, of the community, um, it, you know, having, for example, an open issue tracker makes uh, a lot more sense um, in terms of collaboration than a closed one. Um, and things like CI, any, any customer can potentially build CI that then integrates with the, the vendor CI and adds extra voting or non-voting um, input to, to changes in the code. Um, and and then of course, anyone can you know, fork a code stream and submit changes back, again, because we're working in an open source environment. So, and last but not least, we think it's a win, win situation for everybody, for SAP, for SUSE, for OpenStack, because SAP, as I mentioned, can influence the roadmap um, of the product. SUSE has um, the ability to work directly with the customer to improve the product um, uh, on, on the customer needs and um, don't and also have access to a production cloud not only to, to small labs and um, yeah, as, we, as we mentioned all our fixes um, will go back upstream to the OpenStack community. So I think we are at the end and yeah, there is I'm not sure unfortunately not, no time for questions <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but it's worth to mention that we are hiring, so if you want to be part of a great SAP or SUSE team, yeah, just talk to us um, after, after the session. Thanks very much. <laughs>